Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. And as always, before we get started today, I'd just like to take a quick moment to welcome all my new subscribers and to thank everybody who's been leaving me comments and messages down below. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And if you would like to take a couple extra steps to help support the Historic Travels YouTube channel a little bit more, there's a merch store and a Patreon for this channel in the links below. Thank you guys so much for all your support. And all right, guys, so I thought for this video, we may tackle another Titanic question that I get asked all the time in my comment section and in my live streams. And the question is, do I think that one of the officers on board the Titanic during the sinking committed suicide? This has been a long-standing myth with the Titanic. And honestly, a lot of people have thought of this as fact, that it really did happen. I honestly thought this as well for a very long time. But in recent years, as I've actually started to study this event a little bit, I was kind of hit and miss with it. I really didn't know what to think. So I decided to do some research into it, and I thought I'd share my findings in this video. So join me as we tackle the question, did an officer on board the Titanic really take his own life as the RMS Titanic was sinking? All right, so before we actually discuss if or if not one of the Titanic's officers actually committed suicide on the night of the sinking, let's first actually tell the story of this rumor so that those of you who are watching who have never heard of this before will have a better idea of what's going on. You see, according to the rumor, there was an officer on board the Titanic who, while in defense of one of the Titanic's last few remaining lifeboats, actually was forced to use his gun and he shot and killed two of the Titanic's passengers who were attempting to rush a lifeboat. Now, once this officer realized the horror of what he had just done, this officer then decided to take his own life with the same gun. Is there any truth to this story or rumor? And does it have any basis in fact? The whole idea around this supposed suicide that occurred on board the Titanic during the sinking has been a topic that has been highly discussed and highly debated on among those in the Titanic community ever since the disaster. So when I first started doing research into this topic, what I decided to do first was to actually try to find the origins of the story. Because if in my research I discovered that people weren't talking about this story until let's say the 1940s or 50s, you know, decades after the sinking. Well, in my mind, that would actually discredit the story of a possible suicide because think about it. If you were on board the Titanic and you saw one of the ship's officers kill themselves, well, you would be talking about it right then and after the fact. You know, you would be talking about it immediately, not waiting, you know, 30, 40, 50 years later before you start talking about it. So as I started doing research, I decided to turn to my favorite Titanic book, on a Sea of Glass, I'm telling you guys, this book is basically the Bible on Titanic. If you want to know anything about the ship, buy this book. Link for it's in the description. So when I first started going through this book, it's, it was, to my surprise, it was full of all of this testimony around this supposed suicide. It's got an entire section in the book dedicated to, to just the suicide. And what I discovered was people were actually talking about this before the rescue ship, the Carpathia, even made it to New York City. People were talking about this supposed suicide, you know, before the Carpathia even docked. So upon discovering that and seeing that people were talking about it right after the sinking, well, honestly, in my mind, that goes a long way to actually say, hey, this may have actually happened. Now, in terms of actually where on board the Titanic did this supposed suicide happen, and around what time did it happen? Well, according to the theory, it's most commonly believed that this supposed suicide happened on the Titanic's starboard side, right underneath the first funnel, or in the general area of the first funnel, right around where Lifeboat Collapsible A was preparing to be launched. And as far as who was the supposed officer who actually did commit suicide that night, well, the theory states that it was most likely First Officer William Murdoch, mostly because of his position on board the Titanic at the time. You see, he was in charge of lowering all the lifeboats from the Titanic's starboard side, and he was actually last reported in the general area that this supposed suicide took place. So one very important thing to keep in mind here about this topic, and this is also the reason why it's so difficult to say, yes, the suicide did happen or no, it didn't, is because there's so much conflicting testimony surrounding this topic that it's hard to actually pinpoint exactly what did happen. If you read the actual testimony from the Titanic survivors, you'll find that there's just as many people who say the suicide did happen. And you'll also find that there's just as many people who say the suicide didn't happen. So who do you believe? But what makes it very interesting to me is that there's so many people that say it did happen, as well as so many people that say it didn't happen. 
And to me, what that says is that it looks like that there was an actual suicide or something like it on board the Titanic that night. However, I don't think it was in the exact same place that most people generally believe it happened. I don't think it was Officer Murdoch who committed suicide that night. I do think it's possible that somebody did commit suicide on board the Titanic. However, I'm starting to think that it happened at a different time and at a different location on board the Titanic. Now you're probably wondering what led me to this conclusion. Why do I think that this supposed suicide happened in a different time and at a different location on the Titanic than people previously thought? Well, to be perfectly honest, it all has to do with the testimony that I was reading. I mean, think about it. There's just too many people that say they saw something, and there's just as many people who say that they didn't see something. So the only conclusion that I can draw from that is that the supposed suicide event happened in a different time and at a different location on the ship than was previously thought. So what I'm going to do for the rest of this video is I'm actually going to tell the story of these people and I'm going to share some of their personal accounts into what they said they saw that night. And from that testimony, I'm going to see if we can actually try to shed some light on if or if not this supposed suicide actually happened. Okay, so there is one very important detail that you all need to keep in mind before I start telling you about all this testimony from these people who say they saw something and the people who said they didn't see something. And that is the general location on the ship that all these people said that they were at. You see, all of these accounts and also the account of where this supposed suicide might have happened, you see, they all take place at the front of the ship right around 1.50 to 2 a.m. range, right around that time frame. And it all took place around the Titanic's first funnel. And right around this area on the ship is where the last four lifeboats on board the Titanic were actually being prepped and prepared for launch. Those four lifeboats were collapsible A through collapsible D. So A, B, C, D. All of those lifeboats were located at the front of the ship near the first funnel. Now, of all four of those lifeboats, collapsible A and B would end up being floated off the Titanic. However, collapsible C and D were actually launched from the ship. That's also very important to the story. Now, the first of the Titanic's passengers that actually sheds some pretty good insight into if this supposed suicide actually happened is third-class passenger Eugene Daly. His location on board the Titanic that night, as well as his testimony, is some of the best we have to try to figure out if this supposed suicide actually took place. Alright, so basically what Eugene said he saw. He said that he was located at the front of the Titanic near the end of the ship's life, and he saw two lifeboats getting ready to be lowered away from the Titanic's side. Okay, so based on that testimony, we can deduce that he was actually at the front of the Titanic when collapsible C and D were getting ready to be lowered away. Because if he would have been at the front of the ship, you know, and he saw two lifeboats getting ready to be floated off, well then that would have been collapsible A and B. The fact that he saw two lifeboats on the ship's side getting ready to be lowered away, that says it was collapsible C and D. However, in his testimony, he didn't point out exactly on which side of the Titanic he was at the time. He didn't say if he was on the Titanic's starboard or the Titanic's port side. However, from his testimony, we can get a pretty good idea as to where exactly he was at the time that this supposed incident occurred. So essentially, what Eugene said he saw was he saw this lifeboat at the side of the Titanic towards the front of the ship, and he said that he was going to try to see if there was any way that he could get into this lifeboat. But as he got closer to the boat, he said he saw a bunch of officers surrounding this boat and keeping people away from it. And then as he got closer, he saw this huge crowd of people begin to rush this lifeboat. And then once this happened, he saw one of the officers guarding this boat pull out a pistol and fire two rounds into the crowd, killing two men instantly. And then at some point, Eugene lost sight of this officer that supposedly did this shooting. And then once he did, he said he heard one last shot, but didn't see the shot. And then when he turned around, he saw the officer laying motionless on the deck. And then at this point, another passenger told Eugene that they had just witnessed this officer shoot two rounds into the crowd, then he took the gun and shot himself in the head. Now, based on his testimony, he could be in one of two places at the time that this supposed shooting incident occurred. He could either be on the Titanic's starboard side or on the Titanic's port side. The Titanic's starboard side has collapsible lifeboat C, and the port side has collapsible lifeboat D. However, I believe he was on the Titanic's port side with collapsible D at the time. Because when collapsible C was being launched, which collapsible C did leave the Titanic a few minutes before D, there was no report of any incident that required an officer to shoot a gun at the time that collapsible C was launched. 
There is official testimony that a gun was fired during the collapsible D launch. However, based on official accounts, they were just warning shots. We don't have any confirmation that an actual shooting occurred at that location. All I'm doing is reporting what Eugene said he saw and then basing it on what I know was going on at the time on Titanic. Eugene's story more closely resembles what happened at Collapsible D than C. So based on his testimony, I believe he was at Collapsible D on the Titanic's port side at the time that this supposed shooting slash possible suicide took place. Now, the man you see in this photo's name is George Rimes, and he also gave some testimony that said that he witnessed this suicide actually happen. Now, he didn't say exactly where on the Titanic he was at the time of the shooting. However, his story does match up, sorta, with what Eugene said earlier, with one key difference. You see, this man said that he saw an officer fire one shot into the crowd, not two, and then this officer turned, looked at the crowd, said goodbye, and then shot himself in the head. So we can't say for certain that George is witnessing the same event as Eugene, although it is interesting that his story and Eugene's story seem to match up pretty closely. And then you have the testimony of this man. His name was Richard Norris William. And by his account, the supposed gun shooting that I've been talking about in this video may have occurred much later than what we originally thought. By his testimony, he said that he heard two gunshots as the Titanic's final plunge was beginning. This time frame would more closely resemble the apparent suicide of First Officer William Murdoch on, cl on collapsible lifeboat A on the Titanic's starboard side. However, Richard said that he didn't see anything, only that he thought he heard two gunshots. But it's also important to note that Richard was not in the right place at the right time to see this shooting. At the time of the shooting, he was standing on the Titanic's boat deck on the port side, opposite side of Collapsible A. Now, as far as what Richard's testimony says, he said that he was on board the Titanic's boat deck and he was actually standing really close to the Titanic's bridge on the port side. He also reported that he saw Captain Smith jump overboard. And then right after this happened, he said he saw water beginning to spill over the Titanic's bridge wing and come up onto the boat deck. At this point, Richard then decided to run towards the Titanic stern. And as he was passing the first funnel on the ship's port side, he said he heard several gunshots. He didn't see where these gunshots were coming from, he simply heard them. Now this time frame closely matches with the supposed incident that occurred with Collapsible A, where William Murdoch would have fended off a crowd, shot a few rounds into the crowd, and then shot himself. There is no proof of this. The only thing I'm saying is, is that Richard heard gunshots around the supposed time that Murdoch's potential suicide could have occurred. Now, the only thing to keep in mind about Richard's testimony is the time frame that he said he heard these gunshots occur. He said that the gunshots that he heard were more closer to the end of the Titanic's life, not during the collapsible D incident. We have no reason to doubt the collapsible D incident occurred from his testimony because, for all we know, he wasn't in the right area at the right time to even see when all this stuff transpired. The only thing we know for certain from him is that he said he heard two gunshots as the Titanic's final plunge was beginning, and that this timing of when he said he heard these gunshots more closely resembles that of the collapsible A side of the suicide story, not collapsible D. That's the only thing to take away from this. However, we do have really good testimony from two other people from the Titanic who Honestly, they strongly argue against the whole idea that this supposed suicide ever happened at all, period. If you talk to these two people, they will argue that the suicide never happened. And these men are Second Officer Charles Lightoller and the pa Titanic's passenger Archibald Gracie. The man you see in this photo is Second Officer Charles Lightoller. And you see his testimony is very interesting in regards to the whole did an officer commit suicide on board the Titanic debate. You see, he was actually at Collapsible Lipo D when this huge crowd of people supposedly rushed the boat. And by his testimony, he said that he had to fire two warning shots to keep the crowd from rushing this boat. He made no mention of an officer having to actually shoot his gun into the crowd and kill some people. And then he also made no mention that this officer supposedly killed himself. The other thing that makes Lightoller's testimony so interesting is that he was in a position to see what happened with Collapsible D, and he was also in the right spot to see what happened with Collapsible A a little bit later as the Titanic's final plunge was beginning. So by his testimony, he said that the only gunshots that were fired around Collapsible D were warning shots. No one was directly shot in this incident. 
And then, as the Titanic's final plunge was beginning, Lightoller was still on the Titanic's port side, but he was on the roof of the officer's quarters right around here. I know it's hard to see in this model, but he was right around here, right beside the first funnel. And he was helping push this lifeboat, Collapsible B, that's on the roof of the officer's quarters, off of the roof and down onto the boat deck. And then when he did this, that lifeboat ended up flipping upside down and it landed on the deck. Now at this time, the Titanic's final plunge was beginning. So once that lifeboat was on the deck, he actually ran over from the port side of the Titanic over to the Titanic's starboard side to see if he could help his friend, First Officer William Murdoch, with that lifeboat. And what Lightoller said he saw was he saw Murdoch down there fighting with Collapsible A and trying to get it ready to be launched when then the Titanic took a sudden and strong dive, washing Murdoch away with that lifeboat. That is the last official time that Lightoller said he saw Murdoch. So by Lightoller's testimony, Murdoch wasn't the man that committed suicide that night. He fought with the lifeboats and with the Titanic until the very end. And the last testimony that I'm going to talk about in this video is that of Archibald Gracie. You see, Archibald Gracie was in the right position at the right time to see if a supposed suicide slash shooting at Collapsible A would have occurred. By his testimony, he was on the roof of the officer's quarters where lifeboat Collapsible A was being prepped for launch. And he saw the Collapsible lifeboat A go from the roof of the officer's quarters down to the boat deck. And he made no mention of any suicide or any shooting period around this lifeboat. He said in his own testimony that Murdoch was too much of an honorable man to be a man who would commit suicide. By his testimony, Murdoch did his duty to the very end and did not kill himself the night the Titanic sank. So in conclusion, what do I think happened that night? Well, the first thing I'll say is I don't think for a second that it was First Officer William Murdoch who committed suicide that night. I don't think that at all. However, what do I, what I do think I do think that something happened that night because there's too much testimony of people saying they saw something for, for it not to have happened. You know, you can't have all these people say the exact same thing and there not be some truth behind it. But at the same time, you've got a lot of people saying that it didn't happen. So it's kind of like, who do you believe? The only thing that makes sense to me is that the whole, the whole timetable as to when this happened is different between what all these people think it is. That's one thing that I talked about in this video between talking about collapsible A and collapsible D. I think that if there was a shooting slash suicide, it most likely occurred with collapsible D, not A. However, why does Lightoller's testimony clash with that? And I don't know, you just, you would think that information would be more concrete about this than it really is to say for certain. So to be honest, I don't really know. The only thing I will say is I think if this incident did occur, it was more likely to be a collapsible D. But the one last thing that I find the most interesting about this whole thing is even with all this testimony, there is no mention as to who this officer who committed suicide was. There's no name, there's no idea, you know? There's no record as to who this man was, which I think is very interesting because you would think that people would know about that, you know? You would think that if there was an officer laying dead on the deck of the Titanic that somebody would be curious as to who this man was. You would think that Lightoller would say something about it, but he didn't. By Lightoller's account, it never happened. But bottom line is, we may really never know what happened on board the Titanic that night. The only thing we can say for certain is that something did happen. Although what happened will probably always remain a mystery.